I think we were all aware of how important the Sex Pistols were, and we played the album to death, to death. I was at university, I was at college in Bangor in North yeah. Wales, and we went mad for it. And, and, and our only access was NMA on a Thursday. You know, you'd wait once a week for this newspaper, which should bring news from London, from places like this. <laughs> news the would arrive. That, so, you know, uh, and it was the only journalism you trusted, which is a terrible thing to say, because I'm sure it was kind of fairly scurrilous journalism as such. But they did connect with what you were feeling, which is you wanted something different. And you wanted protest, and you wanted anger, and you wanted something to change the 70s. You didn't realise it at the time that that was the 70s because you're just living in it, but you wanted something broken. And, and it, people find it hard to understand the nihilism of it, mm -hmm. but it was necessary, I think. That was, I think that's Malcolm's point and Vivian's point about chaos. It's only if you create true chaos will something new emerge, mm -hmm. which is literally burn it down and something new can grow. With the right guidance, you could change the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sex Pistols. Punk has taken London's youth by storm. For these actors, their parents were barely, presumably, around. No, no, no. So how did you help them? You, got, you always carry this feeling that the youth will be irresponsible. But they, they were incredibly diligent as actors. They all did the research, so they'd try and find out as much as they could. We said, you know, your lives now are full of stimulation yeah. from the moment you wake up yeah. your lives are surrounded by stimulation which can be good for you or bad for you but then there was nothing and then suddenly there was this battering ram which pushed its way into the media mm. which was the sex pistols just in the same way that you got the actors to learn their instruments and play, play live you know, it's a myth that the pistols themselves couldn't and we don't care. They could play, but the truth was that it wasn't about qualifications. That was what they broke. Mm -hmm. Here's a chord, here's another chord, now form a band, where that came from. Because yeah. it was about what you wanted to say, not about whether you were qualified to say it. That's the kind of chain of command they broke. One thing about this was that in the, the maelstrom of preparing to make it, you had altercations with John Lydon. <laughs> who definitely didn't want it to be made and trying to stop it being made. And he says that you are the boil and the bum. Yes, I haven't been called that. Is since that a compliment? I haven't been called that since primary school. <laughs> One of the main reasons that we made the series was to pay due diligence to what you owe that man mm -hmm. as the front of this group. Yeah. So it's an enormous obligation we owe him for, for what he broke in Britain. What about the word punk? It means worthless, nasty. Johnny Rotten, are you happy with this word? No, the press gave us it. It's their problem, not ours. We never called ourselves punk. I tried to get hold of him on January the 8th. I wrote to his manager and uh, asking to speak to him. And we started filming in March, so a couple of months beforehand. Before that, yes, the group didn't want us to consult him because they said he'll he'll just stop it happening he'll find a way to stop it happening uh, that's what they feared um, but listen he's it's out there generating lots of publicity yes. for the show he, and he, he, he is brilliant at it he says he's going to watch it you know there is license in the film isn't there yes well, absolutely it's a it's a drama and yeah. you and drama has its own rules what it follows you hope that the greater truth is accurate which mm -hmm. is that these four or five very ordinary guys from very ordinary backgrounds who were regarded as being worthless by society yeah. they actually managed to turn shite into liquid gold yeah. in terms of their cultural impact both at the time and later where would you place them not just in terms of you know the birth of punk but in terms of how people thought about britain how people thought about themselves i remember this vividly thinking people like me turned into you turned into your father very very quickly mm -hmm. there was very little time between being young and being old and you turn and, and girls turned into their moms really quickly and of course it was partly class i'm sure it was true in all classes but in the class i come from it was very true and you realized you were gonna you were gonna get put on your father's shoes and follow him into a factory or whatever and 
and there wasn't much expectations yeah. and they broke that what they were saying is that don't be judged by anybody else it's yours and you and if you want you can waste That's it you can ruin it if you want that's up to you um and before then you were obliged to live a life that was predicted yeah. for you i think do you think i mean here we are in another jubilee year do you think there could be that kind of moment again or are we living in a different world now i don't know it throws up interesting ideas doesn't it because you are about to i mean once the jubilee is over the next significant moment in our, the structure of our society is going to be the succession. And you can't really ask this question at the, at the, towards the end of the reign of a woman who's mm. done such an extraordinary time in that job. This is the 21st century. Are we going to believe in the divine right of kings? This is like Shakespeare. I did Shakespeare at school. This was in place then. But somehow the divine right of kings was part of your belief system. Yeah, but there is a stay in it now. It's called parliamentary democracy. There is, thank God. But still, the head of state, you think, shouldn't the head of state, like uh, a parliamentary mm -hmm. democracy, be elected? When you were making the opening ceremony of the Olympics, it was undoubtedly the case that the Queen would be involved. But the idea of having her coming down in the helicopter, that your idea when we wrote to her about it we had a second idea because mm -hmm. we thought you know, they'll never agree to this but you know in the true punk spirit we went for it we said we're going to do this will you why don't you be involved and they wrote back saying yeah thinks it's a good idea how do you think britain has changed from that time when we had the london olympics it was a time when everybody really did feel like they were pulling together and since then there's been such a divisive there's such divisive elements that have happened to us, obviously most noticeably Brexit, mm. which split the country right down the middle. I think there was a, I mean, it's well documented, I think there's a failure of leadership um, on both sides, because I think it's really about representing a deep spirit within the country. Mm. And I think that deep spirit, to answer your question, that deep spirit is still there. Yeah. And it's challenged by a sense of leaderlessness, which pervades at the moment, really, which allows our present prime minister to kind of act like a leader we've never seen before, really, who switches ideas, switches and moves around. So I think, it's, I think there is a big crisis. I don't think it's in the people. I think it's actually in who we look to to create a narrative that we can believe in. And do you think that would be supplied or could be supplied by having a head of state rather than monarchy? I think it would be contributed to it, yeah. certainly. That's, that's my own personal opinion. Yeah. Moving forward. And I think royalty should be able to stand. I mean, they should be... You know, they should be able to, I'm not excluding them, <laughs> they should be able to stand, of course they should, and see if they can carry the vote, that would be fine. Danny Ball, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Kirsty.